All right, music news part two. Ron Wood is not only celebrating the release of his first new album in a decade, but he's also taking pride in enjoying his seventh month of sobriety. Wood's new album called I Feel Like Playing includes cameos by Slash, ZZ Top's Billy Gibbons, Flea of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, uh, Chris Christopherson, and Eddie Vedder, among others. Wood told MassLive.com that the past few months being sober have been the happiest he's experienced, explaining, I think the key was to get rid of the thought that I could always have another one. I get some clean time behind me in the past, and I get overconfident. I think, hey, I'm doing so well I can have a drink. That's why I've always fallen off in the past. Since I got rid of that way of thinking, I'm a much more focused, much better person. Been there and done it. A couple of drinks ain't going to change me. They're just going to change me for the worse. When asked if he's ever felt like George Harrison did in The Beatles by being a junior member who scrambles to get his songs on Rolling Stones albums, Wood said candidly, I suppose it's everyone's dream. It's my dream to get more songs on Stones albums, but I haven't had it bad. I've got about 12 or 13 songs past the test of the years, but it's a pretty close shop with Mick Jagger and Keith Richards. It's such a strong songwriting unit, you really don't want to get in the way. But I'm always there if they need help for extra songs. I've got a feeling that they'll be calling on me to collaborate more, and that will be just fine. When pressed about the future of the Stones, Wood added, I wish I could say, I don't think any of us can say at the moment. We're going to have our Stones Summit meeting towards the end of the year and see what everyone feels like doing. I'm sure everyone's got itchy feet, though. Wood says that completing his 2007 autobiography called Ronnie helped him on the path to sobriety by making him take time to reevaluate the key moments of his personal life. It surprised me how much did come flooding back and how much has come flooding back since. You know, it's kind of opened new valves in my brain. As I said, it's quite therapeutic, you know, going when I, from when I first lost my first girlfriend, for instance, how much that really did affect me and the effect that alcohol has had on my life since. And, um, you know, things like the continuing struggles that uh, help the day-to-day -day living get more bearable, you know. Over the years, Wood has co-written many memorable Stones album tracks, Emotional Rescue from 1980, Dance Part 1 off Tattoo You in 1981, Black Limousine, and No Use in Crime from Undercover in 1983, Pretty Beat Up from Dirty Work in 1986, One Hit to the Body, Fight, Dirty Work, and Had It With You. Although uncredited, Wood also had a hand in writing 1974's It's Only Rock and Roll But I Like It and 1976's Hey Negrita. And that is music news. All right, time now for the... When someone does something stupid or weird... Taylor's going to let you know about it. It's time for the news of the weird. A man from Newport, Ritchie, Florida, pretended to be deaf to get out of a potential drunk driving charge when he was pulled over on Monday. Officer Chris Denton used sign language to ask Christopher Michael O'Callaghan for his license and registration, but O'Callaghan could not understand him. He finally started to speak with the officer and confessed that he wasn't deaf. It was arrested on several charges, including DUI, driving with a suspended or revoked license, and providing false identification to law enforcement. On his way to jail, O'Callaghan said to the officer, You guys were persistent. I usually play the death card and get away with it. I knew I was screwed once you asked me for my social security number. And unlike uh, what I said during the show, I kind of get it now. He's deaf, sign language, social security number, a little hard to do. All right, Astronauts for Hire, a nonprofit space research corporation, will be testing an Australian beer, no, not Foster's, that has been brewed for drinking in both gravity and non-gravity environments. The beer, called Space Harley, was prepared using barley grown from seeds that have flown for five months on the International Space Station. Testing will begin in November on board Zero Gravity Corporation's modified Boeing aircraft that simulates environments of weightlessness. I don't care who you are, that's pretty cool right there. That is really, really cool. All right, and finally for today, you know what it's time for. From ghosts to lake monsters, vampires, witchcraft, zombies, yetis, and psychics, Julie King reports it, Taylor reads it. From That's Just Weird.com, let's take a look at the unusual and paranormal that we have around us every day. Today, impossible to depict. Citizens of Nueva Palmira, Uruguay, are abuzz about the appearance of a strange imp-like creature on a power line back in June. People called the police to report seeing a flying creature standing on and hovering above a high-voltage power line by the port for several hours. Witnesses said the creature changed colors and was shaped like a doll. It seemed to become annoyed and would move away or wave and shake its head when they shined their flashlights on it. Of course, no one was able to take a good picture of the thing. Really? Seriously? It was there for hours, and no one could get a good, decent picture of it. 
Sure, I can see where phone cameras might not have been that great. I can take a picture of my brother dressed in a suit and tie with mine, and it'll look like I might have finally gotten photographic evidence of Bigfoot. Wait a minute. And my concert photos look like an alien invasion is upon us. But come on, people. No one had time to run home and get a real camera or go into a convenience store and buy a disposable Kodak? Seriously? Oh, wait, I get it. The very fact that people tried to get photos on their phones and couldn't get any good ones must be proof that it's such a mysterious and otherworldly creature that it can't be caught on our primitive imagining or imaging equipment. How about at least producing a sketch based on witness descriptions, then? A crude crayon depiction on a cocktail napkin, perhaps? Nope. We don't even get to see the bad phone photos. Maybe the reporter left out the part where the imp threw wads of cash down to the witnesses to bribe them into not producing any depictions of it. Or maybe it threatened to come back and eat their children. Whatever. Serious points off for lack of visual aids, folks. If Julie's missing out on a good story, please let her know via the contact form on the website that'sjustweird.com. She will be sure to give you proper credit. And that is That's Just Weird for Thursday, September 30th, 2010. It is also the afternoon show vlog for the very same day and also for the month of September. Holy crap. September is gone. October is tomorrow. Where has the year gone? Only, what, three months left until 2011? Unbelievable. Just unbelievable. All right, well, I'll talk to you again on the afternoon show tomorrow at 2 o'clock, U.S. Central Daylight Time, uh, Friday, October 1st, 2010. Hopefully you're enjoying this uh, whole vlog thing. I'm enjoying it as well, kind of uh, branching me out just a little bit, getting me into every si single social network uh, that I can think of. Uh, MySpace is dead, so uh, we're not going to do that. Uh, even though it does say that we have a MySpace out there, we haven't updated it in, gosh, over a year. So don't worry about that. All right. So until tomorrow, Taylor King saying so long for now, and stay safe, everyone. Thanks for joining me. Blessed be. See ya.